tonight is to extend the question not only by repeating the question, what is Africa to me, but by saying, what is Africa to Africans and what is Africa to the world? Many people have lost their nationhood. Many people have been conquered. Many people have been abused. And yet, our loss was singularly the greatest loss of any people in human history. Our loss was so great that it was difficult for us to recover because we lost self-confidence and we lost the image of the world as we had previously conceived the world. And our loss was so devastating when it was over, or almost over, we could not <coughs> address God in a language of our own choosing. Or imagine God as any person that looked like us. And we began to accept the image of God resembling our slave master. This image has damaged our mind because no matter what that image has done to you, you are reluctant to challenge the image for fear you're harming the image of God. You will kill each other for stepping on your freshly shined shoes, but you won't kill anything that looks like that image. You can steal a black man's country and get away with it. Steal his lady, he'll kill you. But only if you're black. People have been permitted through oppression to turn on you the one thing that you should use to maneuver yourself through the world the image of yourself as brought into the world by faith, God, in your mother and father. If you say you don't like that image, that means you are denying what your mother and father, what faith in God, no matter what you called him, did for you. You're also forgetting that good is a relative term and what is good for one people may not be for another people. And when people out of power come to power and rearranges power, good becomes what the new powerful people approves of. And bad becomes what the new powerful people intends to oppress. We forgot that we rule the state. One of the things which hampers even entrepreneurship in our own community is that entrepreneurship is part and parcel of the state. And we have forgotten state formation and state management. And if you forget how to rule a state, you will forget how to rule a candy store. 
And one thing relates to the other. Because if the mind can conceive of one, it can conceive of the other. Many people coming to this country, though defeated and oppressed in their own land, comes from a country where they saw their people managing stores, where they saw their people as petty judges, schoolmasters, running things as the basic heads of things. The most devastating blow of oppression that struck our mind was oppression in the United States. And the African had not thoroughly understood the nature of oppression in the United States, nor have the Caribbean people understood the nature of oppression. Nor have they understood their own world responsibility in African reconstruction in giving to the world a new image of the African people in head of a state. Because when they came to power, being a majority, neither in the Caribbean islands nor in Africa, did one truly African state with African values emerge. Every single state, no exception, is an imitation European state. They too forgot the time in our history when we rule the state by values we develop, by spirituality we develop, by a code of honor we develop. And when we rule the state in that manner, we produce enduring societies that lasted thousands of years without a jail system because no one had ever gone to jail, so you needed no system. You did not have a word in your language that meant jail. Now, what prevailed and to what extent did the African mind exercise itself at this period in history to produce an atmosphere peaceful enough not to need a jail system, not to need a place of confinement. There are a lot of things I can tell you to read, but I know I am wasting my time because a lot of people listen to what you say they should read. They are intrigued by it, but they never stir themselves to read it. In a back issue of the Journal of African Civilization, I think it is <coughs> issue dealing with now Valley civilization or the issue dealing with great African thinkers, Shikanta Dio has written one of the most concise essays of our time. I don't know who read it because I have not met a single person who's willing to